Welcome to Walk About the Galaxy Short Takes, the essential Ooh. astronomy podcast where the science is universal, the opinions are personal, and the clock is ticking. We are Strange and Top, the Astroquarks, also known as Josh Caldwell and Jim Cooney, coming to you from the Walk About studio at the University of Central Florida with our first short take episode of Walk About the Galaxy. Jim and I are only good for about 10 minutes without charm or down here. Remember to subscribe to us on all platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Threads. You can contact us anytime at WTG at UCF.edu with questions, compliments, and to find out how to get a cool Walkabout t-shirt. Our short take today uh, is inspired uh, by a Veritasium video uh, about dark matter, and also the exciting return of some normal yet dark quite dark yeah. matter from our solar system back to earth I shouldn't say back to earth since it's never been here that's right but first time to earth uh but first this short take of walk about the galaxy is brought to you by the jiffy if you want to get things done in a hurry get the jiffy clocking in at only 10 to the minus 43 seconds it's the shortest time there is the jiffy that jiff and good <laughs> Is it a peanut butter thing? It is a peanut butter okay. thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I got that right, that the Jiffy is the name for the Planck time. Yeah. I don't know why you need another name for that, but... Besides Planck time? Yeah. Yeah. True. Maybe Planck. maybe it's the shortest time. We don't know. I mean, that's like such a short time that we, we have no way of probing that, but... So that, I mean, the Planck time comes from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the Planck scale... Or something like that. Yeah, it's just like if, if you multiply the fundamental constants in nature together in the right way, you'll end up with a thing that is in units of time, and the number will be ten to the minus forty-three yeah, seconds. A really short period of time, and so it's postulated that maybe time itself is like quantized at that level. There, that is, there are no time in increments of time than shorter than that. Uh, Which so Jiffy is a good name for that. Yeah. Let me just make sure I got that right. It's 5.39 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. So not a little bit less than 10 to the minus oh 43 seconds. So short. Even, yeah. And I'm calling it a jiffy whether anybody else calls it. A <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, We're trendsetters. That's a, tiny, that's a tiny amount of time. Mm -hmm. So some exciting news in, the, in our neck of the woods, meaning our cosmic neck of the woods, not near Walkabout Studios, but at an Air Force proving ground or something near Salt Lake City, I believe, somewhere in Utah, in any event, a sample from the asteroid Bennu. It came down where they wanted it. That was pretty amazing. It came back and everything worked just the way it's supposed to. Yeah. So uh, the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft dropped off this uh, re-entry vehicle, which looks like it's about sort of yeah. walk sized or a little bit <laughs> a little bit deeper or something like that yeah. um, with uh, I don't know if we've gotten a, an announcement yet about how much material it has brought back from the asteroid Bennu right but somewhere what is it on the order around a kilogram or something like that or a little less or they the canister I think sort of had an upper limit of two and a half kilograms in their mission success threshold was um, set at, at a much lower level than that mm -hmm. um, and I think that they were guessing that they had a few hundred grams okay what happened is when they did the so the sample capture part of the Osiris Rex mission to get dirt off the surface of this asteroid Bennu Osiris Rex remember was an orbiter not a lander so it kind of did this touch-and-go maneuver where it and the, the gravity of that asteroid is next to zero, so right. you're orbiting it, but really, you're just kind of there <laughs> yeah. next to it, right? And so it came down with this um, tag SAM uh, device at the end of a rod, <clears throat> and it blasted a puff of nitrogen gas into the surface, which kicks up a bunch of stuff, and then it just sort of has like this, like a pie pan kind of container, and it just scooped it shut. And then originally what they were going to do, the mission plan called for them to pull back from the asteroid and then spin the spacecraft and measure the change in the moment of inertia oh of the spacecraft 
before and after they had captured their sample, ah. and that would then tell you. So, in other words, you apply you, a using known physics force, one to figure out physics yeah. one experiment there. All right. So, apply a known force with the thrusters and measure the rotation rate of the spacecraft, and then do that before you grab your dirt, and then after you grab your dirt. So it's like if you are spinning, and you you know somebody tosses you a ball, then you're going to slow down because you've got a greater moment of inertia. So that was their original plan to measure, yeah. but there was so much stuff came blasting off, they didn't feel that they had been able to properly close the lid on the pie pan. Uh, so they were worried if they start spinning stuff, it was just going to be coming out. So it's like, screw the spin maneuver, and they right. managed to get it closed, and it's just like, we're just... Because the whole point of doing it at that, because you're going to measure how much it is when you get back home. Right, right, right. So the whole point of doing it then was like, like, oh, if we didn't get enough, we can go back and try again. Right, right. And they're like, we got it. We got it. Yeah. So, but I don't know if they, if we know how much we got yet. No, we should know soon. We'll find out soon. Perhaps I think they're opening that thing up. Uh, Imminent now-ish. Yes. Yes. So that was exciting, and congratulations to that whole team. And now that spacecraft is now called the Apex mission because it's going to be. Uh, hooking up with another asteroid called Apophis, hence APX. Yeah, that's a, and that's something that I think until the last episode of Walk About the Galaxy I didn't realize. I thought the whole the whole spacecraft was coming back to Earth, but oh. they, but they didn't. They dropped off dropped off your the good bits, yes. and then they're just going to let the spacecraft go on and do other fun things. That's, yeah, that's I cool. mean, this is just a tiny piece. So the main part of the spacecraft is all the instruments, cameras, all that stuff is still out there. Right, power supply, engines, and that's going to go explore this other asteroid. Awesome. All right, let's talk about real dark matter. Uh, but you should tell them, before we do that, why you're calling this matter dark. Because generally, the material that an asteroid is made up oh. of... Well, what I meant was, let's talk about the dark, dark matter now that we have talked about real matter that is dark. That is dark, yeah. It's dark because... Non dark matter that's dark. <laughs> the, the asteroid is dark. It's dark. Just, it's, it's just it's, color. It's, 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 just... it's got a very low reflectivity. Right. But it is not exotic. It no. is known. Or, it is what we would call ordinary. Ordinary dark matter, matter made up right. of normal yeah. stuff. So we have the asteroid material, ordinary dark matter, or ordinary matter that is dark right. in reflectivity. Now let's talk about truly extraordinary matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> truly dark matter. AKA dark matter. Yeah. Very very different stuff. Um, yeah, Josh had been watching a video the other day. This uh, what did you say? Was very Veritasium, costly, um, which series. they make really great videos. That that, very, the, that very team does a well phenomenal done. job yes. in all kind of realms of science, math, math and science, yeah. and various things that are really really cool. In engineering, uh, yeah. right? Um, and they had one about uh, a really interesting experiment that has been ongoing for about twenty years now. The name of the experiment is called Dama Libra, which is a weird name. It's like D A M A slash Libra. Okay. It's all an acronym, right. <laughs> or, you know, or, a, or a backronym or something uh, crazy like that. But it's an experiment to try and directly detect dark matter. We've, we've talked about on the, on the show many times about how we're pretty darn sure but dark matter is out there because of its gravitational effects on its surroundings, but we don't know what it's exactly made of, and it might be all kinds of different things. One of the leading candidates has always been WIMPs, these things, which stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles. These are things like that might have the mass of something like a proton, but don't interact via the electromagnetic force uh, or the nuclear forces very well, uh, and only only interact via gravity. So, how do you detect a thing like that? I mean, every now and then, it, if it's so, if it's if it's interacting weakly, it doesn't mean it's interacting zeroly. Right. Right. And right. So that's the key, isn't it? That it is the key. It, it is the key. Some interaction. It has some tiny interaction. So, if you throw enough of them through a sample of whatever something through a solid something, then every now and again, one of them is going to interact with that something. Right. Um, by the way, we should say, the, the weakly interacting doesn't really mean like the strength of the interaction is weak. It means it interacts via the weak nuclear force. Oh, okay. But also weakly through the weak nuclear force. So, the, Oh, I, the, I don't think I ever appreciated that. Yeah. I always, I think I always assumed, <laughs> I'm not even sure what I always assumed, <laughs> but I believe that I always assumed that that weak referred to a small cross section. Right. Well, it has that as well, and okay. so it's a, it's a nice double meaning to that. Okay. But but in general, it's the weak nuclear force through which it's interacting. I see. Um, which means, I mean, you have. To, I mean, yeah. I mean, only every now and again are you going to get a thing. So what they what they do, I mean, there is. But that means you you can detect. It's actually very similar to neutrinos, right? right. How they build a neutrino detector. But basically, you build a, a, a an object. 
in the, in the case of this experiment, it's a big crystal of uh, sodium and iodine. And you isolate that from its surroundings, you bury that under a mountain. You surround it with some photon detectors. And you surround it with photon detectors because what will happen is a thing called scintillation, right? Where you, if one of these dark matter particles happens to hit a, a, a nucleus, nucleus right. then it it wiggles that nucleus a little bit. And as nuclei wiggle, they let off light, right? right. Charged particles, when you accelerate them, let off light. And so you can detect that light. Uh, trouble is, of course, that there's lots of reasons why a nucleus might wiggle, right. uh, and so you have all. So, kind of I mean, the reason these things are buried is to reduce right, as right. much as possible other things that could cause those nuclei right, to wiggle. Right, right, right. Things like cosmic rays, right? So they're all. I mean, they're constantly things from space bombarding the Earth. And, and since the, since the wimps are weakly interacting, in all manner of the word weak, I guess uh, they can just sort of go plowing through yep. a mile of earth right. above this detector with right. no problem, and then one in a gajillion of them uh, might hit your special atom that's inside your detector surrounded by that's right. that's photon right. detectors. That's the hope. And um, it's tough because, we don't, again, we don't know exactly, since we don't know what they are at all, we don't really know the details of the interactions, but... If you can rule everything else out, then you can say it's that. And, and one way that we kind of would think, or one reason why we'd think this would be dark matter as opposed to something else, if you do see some signal from that, is by watching how the signal changes over the course of a year, right? Because the Earth is orbiting the Sun. Uh, big True. News. Big news. Okay. Um, the Earth is orbiting the Sun, uh, and the Sun is, is kind of orbiting the common, the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So as the Earth orbits the Sun, it's going to be kind of for half the year plowing kind of into this cloud of dark matter. You know, the idea here is that we think there's a big halo of dark matter that surrounds and fills the Milky Way galaxy. Right. So as we go around the Sun in one direction, we're kind of maybe moving away from that cloud, or not away from, but we're in moving one direction. We're moving through it faster through it. or slower right. as, over the course of a year. Yeah, I didn't say that well, but yeah, yeah. And so you should see more or less detections over the course when of a year. When you're moving through it faster, you you're see more get detections, more detections and moving slower, you'll see fewer. Exactly. So that's kind of the hallmark of a detection of, of a dark matter thing, you know, in, instead of some just noise. Thing. Cosmic rays wouldn't do that, for nope. example, because nope. they're completely independent of the Milky Way and they're not going to care how fast the Earth is going around that. Exactly. But Something that's Earth-based, you know, if it's radioactive decay of something in the Earth, it won't matter. It'll be constant. It'll be constant right. and so forth. So looking for that, uh, that signal that changes over the course of the year, that's, that's the thing. So uh, to get to the point, this Dama Libra experiment that has been running under a mountain in Italy uh, for 20 years now has repeatedly said we see a signal. Mm -hmm. They found a signal that changes in just the way that we just said. It's, it peaks in June, June. and it uh, dips, in, winter, dips in, in December. Uh, and every year they're getting the same signal, yeah. or same variation in signal. And in fact, they've built up so much data that they claim something like a 13 sigma detection. It's like, so it's, okay. it's not... That's rock solid. That, that's ridiculously rock solid. That's, that's, there's something is there. Right. Unless I had they're a feeling there was a problem. unless they're doing something wrong, uh -huh. right? Unless you're analyzing the data wrong, or you don't understand your detector, or something like that. And so, uh, there's two things that you could do to kind of check this. Thing one is that same kind of group of folks is now building a detector in Australia. Australia. So that's one way to check. So uh, Italy, of course, is in the northern hemisphere. Australia is in the southern hemisphere. Because one reason why you might get a signal like that that's not dark matter is if there is some seasonal thing like the humidity changes right. you know is different in the summer and the winter uh, if you build a, a, the same detector in Australia and you see the same thing like it's high Peak in June, June low in December and it's not, not earth seasonal it's, it's earth orbital, it's earth orbital. Right. and that would be a strong indicator that maybe it is actually a signal uh, so that uh, that detector has been built and it's being moved in I think as we speak to the uh, I mean, it's again, it's in a deep uh, abandoned gold mine in, in Australia, and I think they're going to start taking data later later this year. I think it's actually... Where they may have started they already. They may have started, but, it, but of they course, it'll take some years if you're looking for an annual signal. Right, you're right. It'll take a few You've years. You've got to, you know, shake things out and have a couple of measurements. As you said, the Italian one's been collecting data Since, for 20 years or right, something. Right, right. Um, so what's your take on this? So here's the other thing that you do is... 
you know, one of the hallmarks of science is that your experiments need to be reproducible. True. And this is where you, they get themselves into trouble. So one big criticism of this group that's doing this thing is they have not been transparent about with their data, with their uh, analysis pipeline, with any of their really? techniques for analysis. This is frustrating, uh, and this is not the way science is typically done in the 21st century. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes we, if you have a big experiment, you sort of hang on to it for the first six months or right. a year or something, right. so that you get the, you've spent all the time investing and effort to create this thing, you want to get first crack at like the discovery, right? Right. right. 20 years is plenty of time uh, to have right. that first so crack. I, I, at that <laughs> point, all of the raw data should be out there. It should be, it's not. And okay. their techniques and their data are not out there. Who funded this? Uh, I, uh, that's a very good question. I don't know. I think it's, it's pretty much anything funded by the U.S. government. Right. So this is not. It right? has this a requirement <laughs> that all the data gets put out there for the public. Right. So this is this is not run through the U.S. I mean, this is. I mean, I know it's not the U.S., yeah. but I mean, I wonder if it's the if it's a nationally funded, or uh, yeah, a this private is a, arrangement or something like that. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know, but that's tough because that means it's very hard to check whether they're doing something right or wrong. So in recent years, I mean, it's an intriguing enough result though. I mean, like if it's there, we've detected dark matter. It's friggin' awesome. Um, and so in recent years, other folks... You would folks, think they would like want to, you know, publish it, have it verified and pick up their Nobel Prize. Right, right. If it's real, they're going to win the Nobel Prize. And what, what, of course, everybody says is it doesn't matter. Like let all, it, let everybody see it now. Right. You're going to you, win the Nobel Prize right. you, if it's you've real. You've already right? got your claim. You've right. already... Right, That's what, yeah. But... Uh, but we've done this again. There's a, there's a, uh, a thing called the yeah. Anias experiment, which is the same thing. It's using sodium iodine, uh -huh. same s experimental setup, nothing. Oh, not just that. Experiment another experiment. Another experiment. So, so we've run about a dozen or 15 other experiments over the past 20 years looking for the same thing and seen nothing. The Anias experiment is intentionally tried to match as well as they can because the, the experiment the, done in, in, Italy. Uh, in Italy and it doesn't see anything. And ah. so probably... It's an irreproducible result. Yeah. And there are some pretty good ideas. We've seen some... some one thing they're doing is that I know this is a short take and where I'm going long, but uh, <laughs> one thing that they may have done wrong is that they... They're not characterizing the background noise very well. Uh -huh. Usually, you can just ignore that by deleting it if it's fairly constant. But right. it's not constant. If they've got a seasonal background. Or if it just slowly increases. A fun, oh. funky thing they seem to have been doing is it slowly increases, but every year they just delete, they just uh, subtract one number. So they're. So what that means is in the beginning, yeah. It's, and, it's and the data running. is, you yeah. can't tell the difference between a sign and a step function in right. the data. And so that's. Probably what it is. Hmm. So anyway, they'll have to make sure that they do the if they do the stairs six months out of phase with the Australian data. Then they're going to get a confirmation. That's right. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So well, sorry, we'll I don't tuned, think we found but, dark matter. Well, that means that mystery is still out there for you to solve. You, the to listener, get the, to get that, Nobel, get that Prize. Nobel Prize. Well, it may have felt like a gajillion jiffies. It was just a short take of Walk About the Galaxy. Give us five stars, and we'll give you the universe. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get all our updates. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and catch up on old episodes wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back next time with a full Walk About the Galaxy. Our theme music was composed by Richard Jurisic. Production assistance was provided by Logan Basinger. Thanks to our listeners in Houston, where that sample of Bennu is headed, I believe. Nice. Stay safe. I'm Josh Caldwell. And I'm Jim Cooney. We're the Astrocorks signing off until the next episode of Walk About the Galaxy.